Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Airy, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado let's go. Today's first story. In this story, a college professor's close friendship with her students raises concerns for her husband. Despite attending their gatherings and discussing coursework outside class, her actions seem innocuous until he discovers her engaging in an intimate encounter with a student. Shocked, he takes a picture, leading to a divorce filing and reporting her to the college president. She loses her job, moves out of state, and experiences a sharp fall from grace. He cautiously re-enters the dating world, harboring skepticism about trusting others' personalities and fidelity. Now let's get into the story. My wife, 35 of two years, had been working as a college professor for a few years when this story took place. She had worked hard for several years to get this job, and she had every right to be proud of herself. Her parents certainly were. She had a huge graduate and new job party with the whole family in town. We even waited to get Mary, per her request, so that she could ensure her dream job. This was what she was all about, and I couldn't imagine her doing anything that would jeopardize her job or our future together. But I wouldn't be here today if she didn't. She became good friends with some of her students. They were in their late 20s, so they were similar enough in age, but I did think it was a little weird that she was friends with them while also being their professor. It didn't seem like a very professional choice, but I hesitated to tell her my opinion. She actually went to some of the parties they had. As far as what she told me, it was more like a group get-together, much more chill than a party. She said they even discussed some of the lesson topics with her, because that's just how passionate and focused her students were. I just let it keep happening. I really wish I would have tried to convince her to stop mixing her dream job with pleasure, but she was so happy. She really was on top of the world and felt like she was making a difference in their lives. She always came home at a reasonable time because she didn't want to leave me alone all night. And she never went out more than two times a month. I knew something was wrong when she stayed out until 2 AM, I was awake and waiting for her, and we had a fight. She said she was just helping her students, but this was unacceptable to me. I demanded to know what was really going on, but she wouldn't say anything different. I asked her not to socialize with students for a while, and she freaked out. She called me controlling and started. It. She claimed to be a responsible woman that deserved to live her life freely, especially when she found someone that made her so happy. My eyes went wide. She quickly corrected herself to say something and said she was mixing up words because I was confronting her and she was tired. I was so concerned by her mistaken wording, but I didn't have it in me to argue anymore. That night, I couldn't ask her to take off work either. I wasn't sure how or when I was going to bring this up again. I knew I should, but I thought I'd just wait to see what else she was going to do. For a while. Everything calmed down. She didn't stay out and only went to work and came home. It was great, but she still had to grade papers at home, and for that I left her alone to study. I then walked in on her texting someone and it made her jump out of her skin. That was weird, but I didn't draw attention to it. I thought about checking her phone later, but she had a code on it. I decided I was going to set up an opportunity for her to bring students to the house, but I'd secretly be hiding nearby. I needed to know who these people were and if something else was going on. She fell for it super quickly. As soon as I said I was going to spend an evening with my mom in the nursing home, she was thrilled. She said I was so sweet for going and offered to give me a ride and then pick me up later to throw her off. I agreed and walked back to the house. It took 20 minutes. I wasn't sure what I was going to find, but I still had trouble picturing my wife doing anything less than honorable. A few times I told myself I was crazy and started walking back to my mom, but then I turned back around again. When I got there, I could see a different car house. She expected to have all the time she needed to do whatever she wanted and then come pick me up. Seeing the mystery car fueled me and I ran to the front door. I unlocked it with shaking hands and saw the most disturbing thing I'd ever seen. My wife was having intimate with her student before either of them. I took a picture. It's a high-tech world now. I took my phone out when I saw the mystery car, so I'd be prepared to take a picture of whatever my wife was up to. If it was all good, I would have been the crazy one. But now she was. 
It all started to hit me after she got her pants on and her student ran outside. She started yelling God knows what while my head started pounding. I could only hear my heartbeat as thought about how our marriage was over and the future I expected to have with her was a false hope. Her career was over. She'd never be allowed to teach at this school again. The next school would want to know why she was fired from this school. I snapped out of it and demanded to know why she risked everything she worked so hard to build for one of the first students she ever had. She stared at me blankly and then said he asked her to hang out with him and she didn't expect anything bad to happen. I started yelling when I said something bad has definitely happened. She brought him to our house and opened her legs. She started flipping me off and screaming at me, saying it wasn't her fault and I stopped them from finishing, so it shouldn't even count. My jaw dropped. I told her she was so shockingly wrong in her logic that I couldn't even argue with her. I packed my bags and got hotel room. I didn't feel like arguing with her anymore that night about who was going to be the one to leave. It felt like I was talking to a spoiled brat that expected to get away with this because of everything she accomplished prior to it. I was not going to stick around and I wasn't going to let her keep her job either. I filed for divorce and sent the picture to the president of the college. Just as I suspected, she she hated me and could not look me in the eye at any of our future interactions. I never saw her eyes again. She went from a confident, flawless, overachieving woman to one of shame and disgrace. Her parents couldn't even believe it and actually asked me to send them the picture. I did reluctantly. That they apologized to me. My wife didn't work for any colleges in the state. After waiting a few years, she moved out of state, probably because she couldn't get a job no matter where she applied. I have started dating again, but I will not be quick to believe I know someone's personality or that they'll remain trustworthy at all times. Today's second story. In this story, Op's wife went out for drinks with a coworker, returning late the next day. She offered a vague explanation involving minimal alcohol consumption and a movie. He, aware of past affairs, questioned her, suspecting more. She admitted to buying and using cocaine, adding to the mystery. Her contradictory statements, missing hours, and evasive behavior heightened the his suspicions. He attempted to investigate but found no evidence. Now let's get into the story. So last week my wife told me she was going out for drinks with a female friend from work. They go out once a week or so, multiple times a week on occasion. A little background. We have been together for 25 years at this point. My wife dealt with pain pill addiction for many years. She spent the last 15 or so on another addictive med that kept her out of withdrawals. She recently got off of that and has taken to drinking all day. Now she has admitted to me that she slept with her ex-husband not long after we met, but not to anything else. She told me before about all the time she cheated on her ex and that she would take it to the grave before she ever admitted it to him. She only told me about sleeping with him to hurt me at the time. Anyway, there is another guy that is actually the father of her niece that she had a relationship with before he got with her sister. I know this and have known for years because I saw their emails. At that point, she felt compelled to tell her sister about their relationship so that she didn't find out on her own. She felt that it would be too hurtful to not address it and that if I ever learned the full extent of it, I would leave her and take our kids. I've asked her about it before and she has always denied it. Fast forward to Friday morning. She leaves the house in the morning to go to work. She reminds me that she's going for drinks with her coworker and that she may be home late but probably not. She claims to have a hard time being around her coworker for too long because her energy is too high. Around 4.30, she sends me a pic by text of the two of them and says that they are having a couple of drinks at her house and then they're going out. I acknowledge her message and tell her to have fun. Around 8 hours later she sends me another text saying that they are going to her house for a couple more drinks and to watch a movie again. I say okay and tell her to be careful and I go to bed. I wake up around 9 o'clock in the morning and she never came home. So I sent her the wow text to which she doesn't respond. She read it, but didn't reply. Our kids are worried. I already checked the local county arrest record just in case she got stopped for a DUI. Nothing. I don't hear from her until she staggers in the house at 4 in the afternoon. She comes in and lingers by the door, where I can't see her for a minute before she goes into the hallway bathroom which she never uses, instead of walking the 10 steps past me to the master bath in our room. 
When she does enter the room, she doesn't even look at me and has her back to me for the most part. When she does finally speak to me, she says why are you looking at me? Go back to watching your show. At this point, I tell her that I expect her to account for herself and why she's been Mia for so long. She then tells me that her and the co-worker went to the bar, went home, watched Fifty Shades and she then passed out. When she woke up, her co-worker had left her in her house by herself and went to her boyfriend's house. At that point, she came home. She said all she had to drink was three Bloody Marys and a shot of tequila the night before. This is a lie, I'm sure, because she was still drunk when I pressed her. She went into the bathroom again for several minutes. After just using the bathroom less than five minutes before and telling me she stopped at the gas station to use the bathroom during her five-minute ride home. I asked her repeatedly to tell me the truth because I didn't believe the story and she refused. She claimed that she would never lie or cheat, so I called her out on the other guy, her sister's ex. She told me that all they did was kiss and I told her that I didn't believe that because she has tried too hard to hide it and that wouldn't justify me leaving her and taking the kids. I pointed out that her lie and behavior are what was making me doubt her about telling me the truth. I then asked why she was still drunk, if she had so little to drink, and why she was so tired if she had gotten nearly 10 to 11 hours of sleep. Because if she just got home, she must have left her friend's house around 330. In an attempt to convince me she was telling the truth, she offered to show me an email from the sister's ex talking about how they never had intimate, which blew me away. Of course that stream had been deleted. But I did see where she sent her friend a text before noon that she had woken up and left to go home four hours before she arrived. She told me that she didn't know what time she left, even though the text did. Then she said that her only stop on the 10-minute path home was a Sitco gas station because she didn't feel well. So she passed out in the parking lot in her car. This is BS because she texted her work friend again at 230 to tell her that she had a great time last night and that she would talk to her later. I continued to ask her where she had been and what she had been doing, to which she offered that she bought $25 worth of cocaine, which gave her about three lines and she was afraid to tell me. I told her that that still didn't explain what she did the night before and where she was for the four hours between leaving her friend's house, and getting home, or why she was so tired if she had gotten so much sleep, and finally why she was still drunk the following evening. Her response was if you don't believe me, I don't care. At that point, I dropped it because I obviously wasn't getting anywhere, and she proceeded to sleep for like 10 hours. While she was asleep, I went to Sitco and gave them a story about her car being hit or while she was parked there not feeling well, and asked them to review the tape, but there was no sign of her car sitting in front of the store for 3 to 4 hours. The next day she apologized for anything mean she may have said, and that she drank too much since all the time from leaving her friend's house and getting home 4 hours later was gone. She also offered me intimacy, which she never does, but has said nothing else about it. Today Monday. It's obviously still on my mind and she asked me what now? And I didn't respond. I'm not stupid, so it seems obvious to me that there were some activities going on that she doesn't want me to know about, especially since she threw out cocaine to try and get me to stop questioning her. I figure with that tactic, the rest of her night must have been a doozy. Today's third story. In this story, a young couple married, but the husband's impatience and control issues strained their relationship. A computer mishap led to a public meltdown, causing further problems. Suspicion arose when the wife spent time with a technician, and a confrontation revealed infidelity. They divorced, and the wife faced challenges finding a place to live. The husband received support and learned from the experience, focusing on self-improvement and gratitude. Now let's get into the story. My wife and I married at the age of 22. We were high school sweethearts. We got along super well, and it felt like we belonged together. Our parents and friends thought so. Two things that I struggled with were impatience and control. Whenever I had to explain something to my wife, or whenever something wouldn't happen the way I thought it should, I would freak out. I wasn't always like that, it was only when I couldn't help it because I was working on something or anxious for something to happen. One of these times was when I was working on animating a cartoon I'd been working on for weeks. Suddenly, the program I used crashed. I couldn't get my computer to work right, which escalated into having to wipe the corrupt hard drive. I don't know what happened, all I know is I lost my mind. 
I didn't have the most recent work backed up anywhere, which I know was my fault, but I expected my computer to continue working just fine because it was relatively new. I was upset. I was yelling and started throwing things. I made a fool out of myself. There were a few other things that made me behave immaturely in the past couple of months, but I won't get into those now. My wife was sick of me. I knew it, I could tell, but she didn't want to comfort me or help me through it. She was ignoring me pretty hard. I finally caved in and asked her to do me a favor by coming along to the repair shop with me. She was the one who introduced me to the repair shop and told me she had been there a few times when she had computer issues. At the shop, there was an extremely buff nerd who knew exactly how to fix my computer. She kindly asked him where the bathroom was, so he took the computer with him to show her where it was in the back. He said he'd update me in 30 minutes. I watched them disappear together, and it was a little weird, but I expected my wife back in 5 minutes or less. 20 minutes later, my patience grew thin, so I decided to head back there to see what was going on. When AP saw me, he immediately became defensive asking what I was doing there. I told him I was just checking in on my wife to see how she was. He quickly answered by saying she was fine and told me to go back to my seat. I ignored him and continued to stand there, waiting for my wife. What I saw afterwards was absolutely shocking. Just as I was about to go check on my wife, she came out of the bathroom and it appeared her shirt was not buttoned up all the way. When she saw me her face instantly went into a state of panic. I knew something had happened between them, and I told him I was going to tell his boss to check the cameras, and he said there weren't any in this area with a slight smirk on his face. So without missing a beat, I punched him. I looked at my wife furiously, then walked out of the building without the computer. She then came running after me, saying she was sorry, and that wouldn't happen again. She sent something just came over her, and she didn't mean anything by this. She was frustrated because I was frustrated, and when he suggested it, she just did it. She said she only loved me and needed me because I was her soulmate. I told her I thought she was mine too, but apparently not. She ruined our marriage just for a few seconds of pleasure. I told her we were done, and she needed to call someone for a ride, and place to stay, and a future life because I wouldn't be any of those to her. She chased after the car, crying and screaming. She dialed someone, and my phone started ringing. I ignored all her calls and informed our families what happened. One day she sent me an apology text telling me she wanted to come clean some more and asked for forgiveness. She mentioned that her and the computer technician had been flirting with each other for quite some time now. It started off a couple months ago when she first went there to get her computer fixed. She mentioned how he was very charming and pleasant to be around. She said she didn't expect that things would escalate the way they did and didn't know how to put an end to it. The reality was harsh. I woke up with a wife and went to bed without one. I didn't think today would be the day she slept with another man. My family support was incredible. My sister came over to clean and make me food. My best friend came over to stay for a few days and brought his dog. I adopted a dog after this because I realized how amazing they were to have. My wife stayed with her parents, who heard what happened and couldn't believe it. They told her she only had one month to stay and if she didn't figure out some respectable option then she would be gone. They held true to their word because when my wife tried to go stay with the computer nerd who was fired because I told his boss, her parents didn't accept her back. Turned out the computer nerd couldn't afford for her to live with him so they broke things off. She had to go find a female roommate to live with and pay rent while struggling on her own. I couldn't believe the support I received and how everything sucked for my ex and AP. Her mistake led me to become stronger on my own and realize I had to stop being so impatient and controlling. I should only be grateful.